Yes? Miss Howard? That's right. Did you want something? Police officers, ma'am. We'd like to talk to you. Police? What do you want to see me for? About a man who did some work for you, Thomas Stanford. Oh, yeah. Come in, won't you? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. This is my partner, Frank Smith, Miss Howard. My name's Friday. How, How do you do, do? ma'am? Just sit down there. I'm having a late lunch. Can I get you anything? No, thank, thank you, ma'am. You sure you wouldn't like a glass of iced tea or something like that? No, ma'am. Thanks very much. Do you mind if I go on with my lunch while we talk? I've been eating later since this daylight saving time came in. I just can't get it straight yet. I never could get it straight in time my dude's over. Yes, ma'am. Now, about this man, Stanford. Oh, Tom. Oh, yes, he's a good gardener. Oh, he does such a good job on the place. You should walk around the grounds. Oh, he does a beautiful job. Yes, ma'am. Could you tell us when he was here last? Well, I'll have to think about that. Now, let's see. It was a week ago yesterday. Mm-hmm, that's right. Last Wednesday. He comes once a week. He should have been here yesterday. I phoned his house when he didn't show up, but there was no answer. Probably forgot. <laughs> He's very forgetful, you know. That right? Oh, yes. Take the last time he was here. He forgot all of his tools. He walked right off. He left them on the lawn. Had to take them all back to the garage. Right, left them right out in front of the place. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I should say it, though. What's that, Miss Howard? Well, frankly, I've never felt that Tom was real bright. He seemed a little backward. How do you mean, backward? Well, when it came to thinking out things for himself, he just couldn't handle it. If you told him to do something, he'd do it. And he'd never vary from the way you told him to do it. Yes, ma'am. But ask him to figure something out, and he was just dead. It seemed like the motor was going, but he couldn't get the clutch out. <laughs> do you remember what time he was here on Wednesday? Well, now, let me see. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning. It was right after that radio program about the friends. I'd just been listening to that when he got here. And it goes off at 10. Have you ever heard it? No, ma'am. Well, you should listen sometime. They do it in New York. It's all about friends. These people tell why they need a friend to help them out of trouble. I listen every morning. Makes me feel pretty lucky. These poor people, I certainly appreciate what I've got when I hear what they have to say. Uh-huh. Was Stanford here all day, ma'am? Yes, all day. He didn't leave until, uh, let me see. Oh, I guess it was about 5 o'clock somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Right before the 5 o'clock news, just before that he left. Yes, ma'am. Well, is it possible that Stanford could have gotten away from the yard at all between 10 and 5? No, no. He was here all the time. I'm sure of that. Well, all right, ma'am. Thank you very much. Well, what's this all about? Is Tom in some sort of trouble? It's just a routine investigation, ma'am. I'm going to give you one of our cards, Mrs. Howard, in case you should think of anything else. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Michigan 5211, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Just ask for robbery division. That's extension 2511. It's right on the card there. See, poor Tom, all this trouble. It's too bad. Yes, ma'am. Wish this were New York. Ma'am? Well, if it were New York, we could do something for him. Well, how's that? That program about the friends. Yeah. Tom could sure use one. Mr. Bostix told you that this trial says as much about us as it does about him. I agree. He's told you that this trial is about freedom. I agree with that, too. But Mr. Bostick says that this case is about free speech. And there, I disagree. Deliberately orchestrating and instigating a physical assault to boost the ratings of a TV show isn't speech. It's deliberate violence. He didn't have to be in that parking lot. He got things started back in the studio. He whipped that audience into a, a frenzy and now shrugs his shoulders at the consequences. Pete Bostick says he represents the American way. He's a liar. The American way wouldn't have left a 50-year-old man dead in a parking lot for nothing more than his ideas. But if violence and brute force will get your ratings, Pete will give them to you every time. And Pete Bostick says he's you. By your verdict, ladies and gentlemen, you will indicate whether or not you agree. Thank you. Hey guys. Hi. How you feeling, buddy? Like 15 bucks. 
This is Dr. Austin. This is Kyle, Michelle, and Danny Corwin. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet Hi. you guys. So, um, I'll be doing your transplant as soon as the heart becomes available. Can someone just explain to me why you just can't take the tumor out? Mish, we've been over this. I know, but I'm just asking. Uh, sure. Um, unfortunately, it's located in the left atrium in a spot that's very difficult to reach. We'd probably only be able to get a small piece of it. Kyle is now status one on the transplant list. I guess all we have to do now is pray for rainy days and motorcycle accidents. <laughs> it's not funny, Kyle. You know what? Um, we'll be back to check on you. All right? See ya. <laughs> 